Welcome to another lecture guys. Today we're going to look at an interesting condition found in children. So without wasting any time, let's have a look at this x-ray. So this is an x-ray of the right ankle. And um, if you can see, that's your fibula bone, that's a tibia bone, and that's your ankle joint, and that's your talus bone there. Um, we all know about it. Uh, for more information, how to read the x-ray of the ankle to identify structures, click on the link above and uh, have a look at uh, the video on x-rays of the ankle now the reason we are here is if we focus and zoom in a little bit on this x-ray now if you look carefully on the distal part of the tibia we see uh, this density and a well-defined lesion here uh, so you can see carefully that's a lesion in the distal part of the tibia normally there is uh, in similar consistency all along in the bone is um, what you can see here but you can see this area here looks different from the rest of the bone it looks like there's something going on there's a circular opacity here um, this is called as a lytic lesion of the bone okay and this can be because of uh, various reasons um, this can be an infection this can be a tumor this could be a previous injury so a lot of things but uh, so this is a classic representation of a Brody's abscess okay um, so we'll be discussing what Brody's abscess is and how it looks on the x-rays and the MRI we'll start with the x-rays and the MRI and then go to a detailed lecture of how it looks like okay so um, I'll I'll put um, um, so that's how it looks on the anterior posterior view of the x-rays so this is again a mortis view you can again see that uh, it's a well-defined lytic lesion about two centimeters by two centimeters roughly and it's going into the growth plate um, and uh, you don't see any cortices that are involved in there um, <coughs> you don't really see anything going on the soft tissue shadows there they look pretty normal the ankle joint per se looks normal so you can see that it's kind of giving you that it's a benign thing and not a malignant thing um, it doesn't look very nasty uh, if i would put in the simple words now if we would look at uh, the lateral view of the ankles that's a lateral view of the ankle so similar to the ap view uh, um, you can see that lesion on the lateral view as well so that's a well-defined lesion there and again on the lateral view, you can see it's just reaching the growth plate of the tibia bone here but no other major changes seen on the x-rays so when you have to rule out certain conditions then you have to uh, think what else you can do so mri is always a good option so so that's your ap view of the x-ray and that's your lateral view of the x-ray so as i was saying mri is the best option for these kind of uh, lesions uh, for better diagnosis for better assessment of what's going on okay um, now mri gives you the picture of the soft tissues around it gives you better assessment of how the lesion is you can have a look at uh, how the soft tissues are responding to uh, the lesion so you can better differentiate whether it's an infection or a malignancy or something else that's going on okay so uh, let's have a look at the mri for this child Okay, so this is an MRI of um, this patient, of this child. Now, uh, these are the coronal T2 images. Uh, to know what, what, how do you identify the uh, changes in MRI, click on the link above and you can see what are the different uh, uh, types of MRI and what are the different sequences that you get in MRI. So this is a T2 sequence, you can see uh, the bone being black and the fluid in the water all the edema being white so similar to what you had on uh, in the x-ray so that lesion there you can see that uh, just zoom in a little bit so the lesion there and uh, you can see the mri changes corresponding to the lesion there okay uh, now let's have a look at this MRI. So I'll zoom in a little bit. So let's have a look at this lesion. So you can see that's well-defined, 
uh, you can see this well defined lesion on the MRI there and if I scroll in you can see the reaction around this lesion okay so let's let's try to define this lesion a little bit more on this MRI okay so that's the best view on the MRI so this is a T2 coronal image you can see this whitish mass here in the distal part of the tibia that's extending to the growth plate and also a little bit into the physis there okay so that's a physis that's a growth plate and that's your metaphysis so sorry this epiphysis uh, commonly called it uh, it's a physal growth plate and that's your metaphysis so you can see the lesion is about 90 to 95 percent in your metaphysial area but a part of the lesion is extending to the growth plate and also to the epiphysis okay uh, the soft tissues look pretty good the bony cortices look pretty good but you can see this bony edema around this lesion now this is usually indicative of an infection a uh, condition that you need to differentiate it is from osteoid osteoma the way to differentiate it is osteoid osteoma uh, wouldn't have that much of a, a bony edema around it it's usually less than one centimeter in size whereas this definitely looks more than one centimeter um, then the third thing is the patient will have relief if you give them NSAIDs or painkillers. NSAIDs, osteoid osteoma releases prostaglandins and if you give anti-prostaglandins or anti-inflammatories, so non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, it releases the pain. So those are the things that can be used to differentiate uh, osteoid osteoma from Borodi's abscess. Okay, now let's have a look at uh, the lesion on the sagittal t2 so again you can see a lot going on in the distal part of the tibia uh, there's a lot of uh, bony reaction uh, a lot of signal change uh, that's the best way to put it so that's the normal signal of the bone there but if you come to the distal part of the tibia you can see there's a lot of white bone there and you can again see that lesion there extending into the growth plate and you can see the uh, reaction around uh, the uh, fights epiphysis as well okay but you can see this really nicely defined lesion in the distal part of the tibia the tibial metaphysis so that's a classic case of uh, Brody's abscess so uh, what we'll do is have a look at uh, both the coronals and the sagittals at the same time okay so that's how it looks like so you can see again the lesion on the distal part of the tibia on the coronals and uh, distal part of the tibia on the coronals and on the sagittals okay so if i scroll both of them so you can see uh, the two images changing corresponding to each other so if you see this line now in the center of the lesion and you can see the corresponding views on the sagittal images there okay um, now we'll have a look at the t1s for uh, the ap and lateral as i said you should always look at all the views okay so uh, the bone is white and you can see the lesion is now black this is in contrast to um, the t2 we have so these are the two t t1 and t2 sagittal images so this on the left is a t1 sagittal image you can see the bone is white the lesion that you can see is black uh, you can see the t2 on the right here where the bone is black and the lesion that you see is white okay so any fluid or reaction or edema is white the remember the mnemonic discussed in our previous videos is world war ii so water is white on t2 that's the way i, I remember easy to remember okay so on the left is t1 okay and uh, the lesion is black and on the right is t2 where the lesion is white okay now um, we'll quickly go through the last type of images that we have so these are the axial images or the cross-sectional images okay you can again see uh, the lesion there really well defined lesion in there okay uh, and a lot of periosteal reaction around it okay and uh, if you go <coughs> so that's your ankle joint just coming up there And that's your lesion there again you have a good look at the cortices the cortices look really really nice there are no breach in cortices there are no major changes signal intensity in the soft tissues around it abscess guys so let's have a look at uh, some of the history 
details about Brody's abscess. Uh, Benjamin C. Brody is the person after whom Brody's abscess is named. He was an English surgeon who lived from 1783 to 1862. Originally, it was described in the tibial metaphysis by Brody in 1832. So what is Brody's abscess? It's a chronic abscess of bone which is surrounded by dense fibrous tissue and sclerotic bone. They are especially common in children, more typically in boys, but they are commonly seen in girls as well. Now these chronic abscesses result from incomplete resolution of acute osteomyelitis and isolation of the infection by the sclerotic bones. So what happens is basically there is a foci of infection which is surrounded by sclerotic bone and the infection just stays there, it doesn't go anywhere, so it becomes chronic. Now as we said before, the condition is more common in children than adults and the usual pathogen is Staphylococcus aureus, but other organisms can be isolated. Sequestra are usually not present, so this is a differentiating feature from other different types of osteomyelitis and multiple abscess cavities may also develop. In the young age group, they appear in the metaphysis, particularly that of the distal or the proximal portions of the tibia. However, less frequently, they occur in other flat, irregular tubular bones as well, including the vertebrae and a diaphysal in location when they occur in these less frequent locations. In abscesses, they may vary from less than one centimeter to over four centimeter in diameter. The wall of the abscess is lined by inflammatory granulation tissue that is surrounded by spongy bone abernation. The fluid in the abscess may be purulent or mucoid. The bacteriological examination of the fluid may or may not reveal the infecting organism, so that's very important. Really, they may cross the open growth plate and they may affect the epiphysis although such extension doesn't commonly result in growth disturbance. In young children and infants, Brody's abscess may occur in the epiphysis and in the carpus intarsus. So clinical features are pretty simple, they are often mild and children usually presenting with persistent local pain of several days duration with no systemic manifestations. Swelling, tenderness, discharging sinus may or may not be there. Usually you wouldn't find much on clinical examinations, that is very very important. But if you have any child which comes to you with let's say four or five weeks of uh, pain in the part of the body that you think might be affected. It's usually a very low intensity <coughs> pain with hardly any clinical feature. So radiological experience appearance. Radiographs outline the radiolucency with edges and sclerosis. So that's the most important characteristic feature. Lucent area as we seen in the X-ray and the MRI before and is surrounded by edges and sclerosis you may or may not have a periosteal reaction. This lucent region commonly is located in the metaphysis where it may connect with the growth plate by a tortuous channel. Okay. Now, appropriate antibiotic treatment in children with metaphysial abscesses may be accompanied by diminution in size and migration towards the shaft of the focus. Now, when, when it's in the diaphysis, the radiolucent abscess cavity may be located in the central or the subcortical areas in the cortex itself and may contain a central sequestrum. In an epiphysis, a circular, well defined osteolytic lesion is seen in the immature skeleton and may border on the chondrosis junction or on the physis, where it may extend into the metaphysis. Now, when an abscess is located in the cortex, is radiographic appearance consisting of a lucent lesion with surrounding sclerosis and periostitis. It simulates that is of an osteoma or a stress fracture. So how do you differentiate these? A circular or elliptical radiolucent lesion without calcification that is smaller or larger than 2 cm is characteristic of cortical abscess. 
whereas a circular lucent area with or without calcifications more than 2 cm is typically of an osteoid osteoma. A linear lucent shadow without calcification is a stress fracture. In the MRI, you see high signal intensity of granulation tissue surrounded by low signal intensity of bone sclerosis. The treatment, since it's an abscess, you want to treat it with antibiotics. Since it's an infection, you want to give antibiotics. However, because it's so localized, surgical drainage is necessary because antibiotics will not penetrate the abscess cavity. Primary curettage and closure of the wound is what's the preferred treatment. It is usually not necessary to perform any wide excision or saucerization of the lesion as is commonly with uh, chronic osteomyelitis. Surgery is always indicated if large cortical sequestrum or discharging sinus is present.